Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to this video. Today what I want to go through is basically our exact rundown of how we're doing 10k a day at the moment for our e-com brand. And it's this video is off the back of uh, a couple of group posts that I've done basically explaining this strategy. And the number of questions that I was getting in regards to the, the, the points that I'm going to go through uh, is a lot easier to just basically explain it. Uh, in a video. So hopefully you get some value out of this. Just before I get underway, uh, my brother and I started an e-commerce business. We're now doing between three and 500K a month in our business, uh, mostly fully automated. And with that spare time and energy, we now help other e-com brands um, with their growth, specifically scaling to 100K a month plus, if that's what they, uh, they desire. And so if you're interested, if you're serious about growing your e-com business and you need assistance with that, Jump down below, book a time, jump in the Facebook group and, uh, and let's get acquainted and see if we can help you out. So let's get into this. So there's three main things that have helped us over the, this, this month, just gone, um, that's really contributed to our growth. Three things that we've really been focusing on. So we'll go through them and, and hopefully that makes make sense and, and hopefully you can implement them into your business. So the first one is social media ads. Facebook ads particularly have been a real topic of discussion since the iOS changes, you know, this time last year, basically April last year when iOS 14 came into effect and how a lot of businesses really, really have suffered from this change in privacy. If you're not familiar with it, go and Google it, have a look at it. But basically what, when Apple came out with a new update, they basically gave people the ability to opt out of themselves being tracked on every app, but it was very high focus on Facebook and Instagram specifically about how much data they could accumulate from people. And that in turn has impacted on basically the, the reporting of results. And then from the reporting, not being able to track people's movements on site, it's it impacted on their, their audience targeting as well. So that kind of has a compound effect about if they're not tracking the data, they can't learn from that specific data set and they can't improve and, and target specific people, such as retargeting, for example. And so this has really impacted on a lot of business. I've seen businesses basically drop by, you know, anywhere between 10 to sometimes 30, 40% in overall revenue because of their reliance was so heavy on social media ads to bring in sales. And like, let's be honest, we were on the gravy train for a lot, lot of time with uh, with social media ads and they were really, really simple and easy to implement. And now they've basically got a little bit harder for people. And those who put all their eggs in one basket in terms of marketing efforts have really suffered. And they're the ones that are, you know, struggling um, at the moment. And so where we have focused is with basically trying to uh, diversify our, our strategy there. So of course we have our core, let's call it our 70% of our budget that is generating conversions, generating sales. And then we have another portion of our business that's actually, our budget rather, that's doing, you know, lead generation. And so that's like our, our longer term strategy where we can, get people in, we can get their, obviously their contact information, give them a resource, which in this case is a, a cleanse guide, a free cleanse guide. And then we can obviously market to them in other ways. So once we own their email address, we can then use obviously email marketing to go and look to convert them, really to educate them, build a relationship with them, get them excited, get them involved and, and into the fold of, of what we're about, and then be able to obviously market them for, for longer term. And so what we've, the reason we've done this is because as we saw with iOS 14, any marketing platform basically can pull the rug from under you at any point versus if you have somebody's details via a customer, you know, they've given you details or something like, uh, you know, lead form or a resource where they've actually signed up and given you permission to take their details. That is something that you actually own. No platform can take that away from you and you can use their email and debt data as much as you like and, and have ownership over that. That's not something that Facebook could shut down tomorrow. Google sh could shut down tomorrow. You know, and so we've really had to start thinking about how we can uh, diversify our strategies around data ownership and how to actually use that. In addition, obviously, that impacts on you know, getting the, the email addresses on socials and then into the email marketing, which is obviously another organic strategy. But, um, but really, by, by looking at social media ads differently or in a complementary sense, we can, we can start to extract more value from it than potentially what's happening right now. On top of this, what we've actually found is because of the, the drop in performance, 
a lot of advertisers, particularly in the small to medium brackets, have actually pulled a lot of their ad dollars out. They just simply can't you know, justify it, even though they're not complementing or supplementing that strategy for anything else. So they're still suffering, and yet they're pulling money out and then continue to lose money. But what we found is that we've remained consistent with our spend, diversified our strategy a little bit, and because people are actually pulling out of the market, pulling their dollars out, um, we're actually getting better results than we were, you know, even a few months ago. And so we're, you know, winning auctions, for example, there's less competition. Um, and people are, you know, really treading on eggshells around um, getting the most, you know, juice out of the, the squeeze of the advertising dollars, which is very challenging and very risky because you have, you're so, you're so reliant on getting every single dollar squeezed out of your ad dollars. That's the first thing. The second thing is, around the actual holistic strategy, and I've spoken about this a lot, it's not just the direct impact that you can see, you know, $5 in, this person went to the website, they purchased, this is the ROAS. Less and less and less are we able to actually track these figures. But what we find is that the specific ad spend contributes so much to the holistic sense of our marketing strategy that if we remove that dollar or that $5, there's no way that people would make it through the customer journey elsewhere. And this goes back to, you know, the fact that um, sales aren't linear. There's, you know, multiple touch points that people are going through before they actually purchase. And we just have to admit that some things aren't tangible or tra traceable, really. And this is something that people just do not see, whether it's because they get scared or they're running out of cash or whatever. They just can't see the forest for the trees. And this is something we explain with our clients all the time. This specific effort is going to help your other marketing efforts. So for example, and this ties into point number two, which is the organic marketing strategy. But from the paid ads social media perspective, we've got our Facebook ads going. And then say an influencer posts or something like that. Um, that's when sales you know, spike. And so what happens is we often see that our sales from a paid ads perspective will actually increase in the same week that the influencer posted. So one is kind of leveraging off the other. And the correlation I can make between the two is, well, would the person have actually purchased seeing the influencer if they hadn't seen the post, uh, the ad, you know, the previous week? Maybe, maybe not, but we're not willing to take that risk. We'll take all the sales we can obviously get, but it's being able to leverage the social media ads off of everything else. You know, ads are just going to amplify what you've really got. So that's point number one. I drove that home pretty hard. But social media ads, consistent spending, and the holistic approach to, to the way you look at it. It's not just the one plus one equals two, okay? The second thing is the organic marketing strategy. So I touched on influencers before. This is a really important part for us. And again, it complements everything else, right? We, we, we don't consider ourselves marketers. We don't particularly love it. And to be honest with you, as a business owner with so many other things to do, it's kind of the last thing you want to do, but too many people avoid it. Like literally too many people avoid it. It becomes the last thing on their agenda and then they wonder why they're not making sales. And so we prioritize this a long time ago to make this our number one thing that we do to drive sales, obviously, but because it's not a, an essential as seen, uh, that's why people you know don't prioritize it. So we go back to, you know, showing up is 80% of success, literally. So we have a very specific plan that we do uh, and influencers form as part of that. So this is by building relationships with people, um, you know, via DMs. Um, we have used agencies in the past, but um, mostly it's around just nurturing relationships, finding new relationships on a weekly and monthly basis and being able to leverage their audiences. It's really as simple as that. And I've done another video before on, on our exact uh, influencer strategy, which you can take a look at. It's about 35 minutes and it goes through the exact the whole thing from start to finish. So take a look at that. But that was one thing that has really impacted on our sales and we see um, you know, blips when, when a really good influencer posts for us or, or taps into a new market. And so you'll start to see relationships between our marketing efforts where it's never just one, uh, you know, all our eggs in one basket, never just one method. It's spread across them all and they all peg each other up in performance. So that's really helped us to do 10K a day in this month and that's been pretty consistent you know for years basically and so um that's the second thing organic marketing strategy you have that down pat stick to it day in day out and it's a compound effect okay and the third thing is automation and our team 
So when Sam and I were starting out in our business, we're a two man band. We literally did everything for years by ourselves, working a hundred hours, you know, sleeping at the kitchen, delivering the juice, whatever it was that had to be done. We were doing that. As soon as we adopted the mindset of, of bringing in automation and a team and uh, to, to help us and our efforts, basically out of necessity because we were working so much, that helped us grow. You know, it's the old take two steps back, sorry, one step back to take two forward, probably in a cash flow sense and to learn these things, you know, learn how to use the automations, train up a staff member, whatever it may be. But it's such a necessity for, for growth. And for us, we, we took too long to get to that point. Uh, we could have grown a hell of a lot faster uh, if we had have took this on, um, you know, earlier. So that's why I'm bringing it up. But our automation and our team now is what is driving everything forward. So, you know, when we have plans to bring in new machines, they might cost us a hundred grand. And that's a, that's a big hit up front. But that's going to save us a hundred grand and some. We'll pay that back basically within, you know, three, four months. So... By bringing in these things, uh, it really, really impacts on our, on our growth and allows us to be consistent, okay? So that's just a machinery point of view. And then we've obviously got, you know, bringing in staff members. So to help with admin, to help with customer service, whatever it may be, these sorts of efficiencies are really, really important. Even from a, you know, I'm just thinking off the, off on the fly here, obviously, but, you know, from um, printing out order forms and how that automates into our, our system, our admin system, like these things are so important for growth once you hit a certain certain scale. Obviously, you can do everything everything you possibly can, but to be honest with you, the biggest bottleneck in your business is you. Literally, like, is you. And so find these things to make your business more efficient, even before you get super busy, because then you'll be ready for it, all right? And so that is definitely something that's contributed to our, our, uh, our 10K days, in a quiet month you know it's 300k a month but we're hitting between three and five consistently and so look i really think that helps Um, so i really hope that helps Um, those are the three main things social media ads if you're thinking about ditching them try and figure out your holistic uh, angle of where people are actually coming from and try and knuckle down where you can get more efficient at it but i would definitely not recommend stopping it because there's no there's no other forms at the moment that are proving to be successful okay uh, organic strategy, have it down pat and just show up every single day. Do it, do it properly, do it well, and that'll just start to compa- compound. And then the third thing is automation and your team. So make sure that you can um, automate as much as possible, bring in people as much as possible so that you can take the load off yourself and, and do the important things such as marketing. And so I really hope that helps. That's how we're doing 10K a day consistently this month. And, you know, that's how we'll be able to build on this month and, and uh, get closer to hopefully the 500 again uh, next month. It's a seasonality thing for us predominantly. But if we know during our quiet months, we can start keep picking those back up. You know, it was less last year this time. Uh, then we're obviously on the way to improvement. So, look, hope that helps. Any questions, let me know. But uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.